I really like her. <laughs> Recording in progress. Um, welcome to episode 46 of the No Shelf Control podcast. I can't believe we're on episode 46. That seems crazy. I know. I, know. Um, I am Lindsay Sparks here with my lovely co-author and co-host, Lindsay Pogue. Uh, before, <laughs> she's doing spirit fingers. <laughs> uh, before we dive in, I want to remind everyone that this is not a spoiler-free zone. We are discussing Rhapsodic by Laura Thalassa. Um, this episode, just me and LP. Um, and uh, if you have not read that book yet, and you think you might be reading that book, um, definitely stop listening when we reach the second half of the show and I will give you a little reminder but uh it's gonna be right after I really read the book description so you know <laughs> if I forget to give the reminder just in case oh, that's um, good. <laughs> but uh before we like dive into the book chat part um LP tell me what you're drinking tonight so I, you know, I was really not going to drink anything. Um, I just wasn't feeling it. Um, I had a really, really bad allergy attack day yesterday. And so Aww. like today I'm just feeling like, you know, it's like getting over a cold almost like anyway. Yeah. So I was like, I wasn't really feeling anything, but I just got my farm fresh produce box and I ordered these, I wouldn't call them fancy because I don't know that they're fancy. I've just never had them before, but these they're they're I forget what they're called but they're a grapefruit but they're gr I green, knew it a green grapefruit yeah so what? anyway yeah and they're really sweet so anyways I made myself all by myself by the way Dennis didn't make it for me even though he's sitting right in the other room <laughs> um so I just made it's just like a gin and, and it's so like they're so sweet but it's still very citrusy it's not like sugary sweet but it's the sweet enough that I don't have anything in it except for gin club soda and grapefruit. green grapefruit so, juice yeah it's really good. It's very delightful. Would you say that green grapefruit is sweeter than a more orange or red grapefruit? Are there red grapefruits? <laughs> well, there's the ruby red ones. Yeah. Excuse me. So I think so. Um, I don't know. I mean, maybe, maybe the same sweetness, but it tastes different. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know how to describe it, but uh, it's, it's delicious. And um, yeah, so everybody knows me and my <laughs> freakishly um, I don't know. I always just have my grapefruit. So yeah. Anyway, I got it. It's delicious. How about you? Uh, I am drinking a um not not a red wine. Um, not a specific one of my like favorite wineries or anything. It's just uh I do think it is a Washington one. I can't remember what it is, but it's a Malbec. Nice. Yum. <laughs> I found this new guy. Well, I take it back. A no, it was Dennis found this guy on, um, YouTube and I'll send you a video about him, um, being Jesus and turning water into wine and, uh, the conversations that are had about people being picky about the types of wine he was making. It's so fun. In fact, I'll post the, I'll send the link so you can put it. Oh in my God. Notes. That's hilarious. Yeah. It's really funny. It's really funny. <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah. So we'll include that. Help, help me remember. I'll make sure I send that to you. Well, but anyway, yeah. So, well, I'm glad we're both enjoying. I mean, it's, you know, 8 p.m. here and there. So it's nice to have a little cocktail, a little with nightcap before yes. we wind down for the night. Yes, it is. Um, <laughs> all right. So what are you working on right now? Um, so I have been doing a lot of writing actually which Yay. feels really good to say that because I feel like I'm always behind but or yeah. you know whatever but I've been doing a lot of writing I probably have about 10 chapters left uh give or take in City of Ruins so that's really cool um, this is a uh, rough draft yeah this is like draft zero so far I'm at like 65,000 words I'm at almost 40 chapters um mm. I know it's going to be longer um and but I mean, that all makes sense, right? Because I mean, maybe not so much. For you. I'm just turning down my heater. Sorry. Get very yeah. cold. <laughs> um, anyway, yeah. So that feels really good. Um, I did have a huge, you know, how I feel like as authors, there's always something 
some fire to put out or something going on that we have to take care of. And I sent out my newsletter today and I was really frustrated because of course the one, the one time, I mean, I do it all the time. I always use like Google docs and Google sheets and Google forms and surveys and all that stuff. And, but I was doing a giveaway today and I linked it to a form. And of course there's something wonky going on with my author Gmail account. So it only lets me, um, allow people to access the form, even though it works for everybody I sent it to, like to test it. Um, it won't let me send it as a public link apparently, because obviously I sent it out and it wouldn't work. And so I have this whole ticket into Google to ask them what the hell's going on, because I can, if I would have used the same form from my personal account, it would have been fine. But I think it's because I have the business suite, like the privacy settings are wonky. I don't know. I can't Mm -hmm. figure it out, but I'm like super frustrated because I spent a lot of my day. I was supposed to be writing all day and I spent a lot of my day dealing with that. So Mm -hmm. just trying to figure out a diff, like sending out a new newsletter with a new link. That's not even the way I wanted to do it, but I didn't have any other way at the time. So it's not just like one of those things where I'm just like, really, it's a newsletter and it's taking me this, like it's causing this much upset in my day. Like, it's just so frustrating, you know? Yeah. But it's totally, I, it's, it's bound to happen. There's like things that happen. You like fixate on it, even though it's, I'm not, not like you fix it on it. No, I, yeah. I do. It's like, this is not as important as I'm making it out to be, but yeah, suddenly it has eaten my entire day. <laughs> yeah. And I think the whole thing is just because it's supposed to be so simple and I've done it a hundred times. So the fact that it's turned into this big, I get all these emails and I'm really glad that my readers are like, Hey, just so you know, the link isn't working. And I was like, I know. <laughs> thank you so much for letting me know, because I really like, I feel bad for the people who aren't reaching out and aren't saying mm-hmm. anything and they're just not even entering any of the giveaways, you know? So that, you know, but yeah. it's just like, ugh, all I want to do is something nice for the readers. And then it t- totally backfired and turned into this big thing. So mm-hmm. anyway, I'm interested to see what Google has to say, because, um, I spent like two hours researching online and I couldn't figure it out. So, hmm. We'll just call it user error for now, but I really want to just say it's not my fault. It's like a glitch in the matrix, but anyway maybe yeah but anyway mostly I've just been writing though what about you I am still just writing um (laughs) I um I am on chapter 30 hmm, I want to say like 9 39 um of this book and I am almost at 90,000 words um I have somewhere between 15 and 20 more chapters (laughs) oh wow yeah. And I actually was able to, there were like a couple plot points or there were a couple like um, elements that popped up that uh, as I was writing in the middle of the second act, um, I saw some ways to make it a little more interesting. Um, so I tweaked a few things, but that required then tweaking of later elements, which mean I had mm-hmm. to reorder certain like conversations that happen later. And that, um, I guess that's the, the plus side of doing the like skeleton draft screenplay thing is everything is so bare bone. Bones that I can kind of just like take pieces out of it feels quite about certain pieces when I'm just like, bye. Yeah. Um, so yeah, but, um, I, it was funny actually. So it was like kind of the second half of the second act got a little bit reordered um, and a few things were taken out just they were just not necessary and they made it like extra complicated and stuff but then the actual third act so the final quarter of the book is it stays exactly the same nothing changes oh there. interesting <laughs> I know so it was all just like about getting them there so nice. yeah yeah I am still just like so into this book it's like you know I feel like each week it's like a greater obsession um well that's yeah. good yeah yeah I feel like I don't know I'm at the spot where I know how I want it to end so I'm at obviously in the last act too and I know how I want it to end but there's a there's like a ch- there's a couple chapters where I could go a bunch of different ways and I can't sort out which direction I want to go. And I feel like if I keep writing up into that point, it will start to flow and feel right. I'm hoping that's mm-hmm. how it's going to go. Cause right now, um, I don't really know how I want to get there. So I don't know. 
I'm really enjoying the interactions and, you know, getting to write all the the good stuff with the characters and all the secrets are coming out and all the cool stuff. But, and like I said, I know exactly how I want it to end, but there's a couple different directions I could go. And I'm like you, like, I keep thinking of ways I'm like, oh, if I do that, I could totally add this really cool scene in like the mm-hmm. first, like in the first few chapters or whatever. And that mm-hmm. would be so cool. And, you know, yeah. So yeah, I'm kind of at that stage too, where I'm just like, kind of reorganizing and rethinking and keep stopping to do a little brainstorming and whatnot. So yeah. Anyway. And it's funny. It's like, so I think I've talked about this before where like the shower is one of my thinking places. Um, and (laughs) so it's a terrible place to have as your thinking place because like you, you, it's not a easy place to have a voice recorder or like a notepad or anything really. Right. Um, but I keep having these ideas about like, the next or the scene I'm in the middle of or the next scene coming up and then I'm like oh but now I have to go back and like add a couple lines in here about this and yeah it just it never ends yeah (laughs) um I do have to say like I love where I am in this book right now because it's for the next few chapters it's just my my two like my hero and heroine yeah and I write like as you know but listeners might not know. I write um long romance arcs, so they're not necessarily like fulfilled. It's not like I don't write like a couple per book. I write a couple per series kind of thing. Um so I don't I guess in the Echo trilogy they hooked up in the first book. But in Cat they don't hook up until the fourth book. Um but I I think I've been like in the books that I've been reading lately, they have been convincing me more and more that I like the like delayed gratification where it just like the sexual tension continues to build like to a later book. And it's not just like, yeah, it doesn't just happen in the first book. Like I want it to happen later because I want to like keep wanting it. Did you ever listen to, I know you downloaded it, but I know you have a gazillion books you've downloaded. So or as far <laughs> So did you ever listen to Wolf, to Wolf Song by TJ Klune? No, I know I have it. Yeah, that talk about fucking drawn out romance arc. Like it's so good. I absolutely love that book. And I actually, it's funny that you bring that up because as far as the, the delayed gratification, because I'm listening to it again right now. Um, and I love it just as much, maybe even more than the first time I listened to it. But I'm sitting there like, it's, it's a, I think it's like a 14 or fifth, maybe it's 18. I mean, it's a really long book. Uh, it's like paranormal romance. So mm-hmm. it's a really long book and it like nothing, like none of the romance really comes to a head until the end of the book. So it's just, which romance isn't like that. Right. So yeah. it's like, it's like pins and needles, even though I know it's going to happen, but it's like the character development is so good that it's okay, but it still angers me at the same mm. time. <laughs> So See, I, li- I you like, would like that. that. Yeah, you would I really like, like it. it. Yeah, I get. Fr- I I don't know. Maybe like I'm just like a one track mind. Like I, as soon as the people hook up, I'm just kind of like, all right, like, <laughs> yeah, there it is. <laughs> yeah. So, so um, yeah. So I'm excited. I'm really excited about drawing it out. So and there not- is so like these two characters are like electric together. So. It's really exciting. Um, nice. And it's not like this hasn't been a steamy book so far. It's just not been necessarily steamy entirely between the two of them. Ah. <laughs> so. Interesting. But it's all around them. Like, all of the romancy aspects. It's always the two of them who, I don't know, it's hard to explain without, like, yeah, giving it all away. But it, it's like... It's cool. It's fun. <laughs> it's steamy. <laughs> well, in all fairness, we did warn everyone there's spoilers, but you know, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I guess it's not really, that's like, but my readers all know what they're getting into with this one. So yeah. You know, um, I do have to say like with this book, before we move on to what we're reading with this book, I am, I definitely know that I am really like conscious of and feeling a, a real struggle with like a third book in this, the third, or the third book, the third series in this world. 
Um, there's a lot of stuff that's happened previously in this world. And it's hard for me to detach myself from a lot of that stuff and to figure out like the things that actually need to be in this book that relate to this story um, to make it friendly to new readers to the world. You know mm. what I'm saying? Yeah. It's just really been on my mind lately. Cause I read, I read my second chapter to my um, re reader group in Facebook. And um, as I was reading through it, I was like, oh, like, I don't know if this needs to be in here. <laughs> not the whole chapter, just like little right. pieces. So I don't know. We'll see. I'll probably go through it one more time before I hand it over to beta readers and, and then I'll see what you guys say. <laughs> yeah. It's, I mean, it's one of those things where it's a, it is a completely different series and you want it to be accessible to new readers. So mm -hmm. you do want to like revisit a lot of the old world, but I can see where it would be hard to not like really just like hammer it in there. Like you don't, yeah, might not need to do that. Yeah, but and I, like the the thing the like not not necessarily like the inciting incident for this story, but like the thing that catapults this it's this in the second chapter or the third chapter, I don't know. Anyway, early on in the book, it's like not a spoiler really. You find out that she's been shoved into the past, and the thing that shoved her into the past happened at the end of the previous series, but that thing is over now, and that's not part of the story anymore it's just like the thing that shoved her into the past so I'm like how much do people need to know about what shoved her into the past like does it even matter I don't know yeah well I guess we'll let you know yeah so and keep in mind it's been a while since we've read any of the other series so we're definitely gonna be like oh, I know you either no, need to it, explain this more or it's yeah, too much it's whatever. actually great I want it to be like as if you had not read the other series yeah <laughs> Um, yeah, so, um, I do have to say I'm really excited about, um, so I have like two to three more weeks of this book, um, and I'm really excited about having, taking a little, little admin time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, yeah we're, we're always on opposite schedules, I feel like. I know. I'm, I'm just now getting into my writing groove. Yeah. I yeah good yeah That'd be good though know. um yeah so what are you reading right now so I mentioned I'm re-listening to Wolf Song by T.J. Klune which I love that whole series um it's like a four five six book series I didn't read all the novellas in between but I loved the novels the four novels that I read they're all equally amazing um so anyways I'm re-listening to the first one um, I feel like, so I just finished reading the Kindle version of the book we're going to talk about today. So I don't have anything new started for Kindle, but I'm pretty sure I've listened to multiple books <laughs> since then. Um, <laughs> what is the one? I don't have my phone sitting. That's what, how I listen. Um, oh, I just finished. I finally finished. Uh, so I go between Audible and Chirp. Um, mm -hmm. so on Chirp, I just finished, uh, Camille Picot's, um, the book of John, Jesus Christ, zombie mm, killer. Mm -hmm. And, uh, that was, uh, definitely now that, you know, I've finished it, I can hundred percent say it is very game of Thrones meets the walking dead. It's very, as a very fantasy, like great historical fantasy element, hundred percent. It's, it's very, um, as she would put it kind of like genre, genre smashing or like, <laughs> <laughs> because it's, it's, is kind of its own thing, you know, like yeah. it is Zompak, but it's also takes place in biblical times. And it's very fantasy related because all the characters from the Bible are like badass, you know, they're not just, you know, sheep herders and, you know, <laughs> like there's like, you know, um, possessions and there's, uh, yeah. yeah. So anyways, but it's really, it's definitely one of those things, right. It's like a slow build up to like, pretty intense uh fantasy battle zombie attacks and stuff which is really cool um lots of famous people uh and Jesus is this kid who he's not like a little kid but you know he's with his cousin John the Baptist and um they go and they try and save everyone and 
Uh, there's like little love stories worked in and stuff. And it's just, it's very different. And I, I really did enjoy it. If anything, like, I think my biggest takeaway from her book is that it is, she is such a smart, she's an intelligent writer. Like everything that she wrote and how she worked in, she made it kind of her own little world, but it felt so rich in history. It just was so cool. I absolutely loved that. So um, anyway, if there's anybody out there who likes, um, you know, very Game of Thrones meets The Walking Dead, this is a, a good book and it's a long book too. So it's a good yeah. listen and a good read. You definitely get your bang for your buck. So good. yeah, I've been kind of all over the place. And that's why I decided I was going to jump into romance after that. Cause then I was just like, okay, something lighter using it. Yeah. A little different, something different <laughs> part of my brain. So, yeah. um, yeah. And, you know, I was talking about this before, but, um, or maybe this was in, I think this is in one of our other groups, but I really am missing writing romance. So this, mm -hmm. I can tell because I've really been reading it a lot more. And mm -hmm. so I really been, you know, contemplating the whole pen name thing a lot and like rebranding the romance series that I already have, Saratoga Falls. Um, I want to get new covers for them anyway. So this is kind of a lot of, a lot of, a lot of stuff bumping around in my brain right now. It's kind of distracting, but at the same time, I definitely don't have a lack of projects that I could be working on. So yeah, I don't know anyway. But yeah, I think we're kind of different like that too. You, I mean, I know you have a lot of projects, but you kind of are like a dog with a bone haul when you are working on a project. Yeah. I, I mean, um, I, <laughs> I would call it like a creative mania. Like it's an, it becomes like an obsession. So, uh, I would say like the la last year, two years ago when I was pregnant was a weird year, you know, because I think I was juggling three different projects, um, just kind of like invigorating. But I definitely missed like being able to just like fully immerse into a, yeah. a project. Um, and so I'm definitely really enjoying, well, I think everybody can tell I'm really enjoying this one. Um, yeah. <laughs> but I'm just really like this. I love writing, but this book is just, I don't know if it just it, like touches me a little more deeply or something, but it's yeah. maybe it's like the Egypt part or it's co going back to a world that I love so much. I don't know, but I yeah. just, yeah, definitely like creative mania, creative obsession. Very cool. Yeah. Or maybe yeah. my muse is just like extra, extra, extra active right now or something. I don't know, but yeah. it's definitely like a hardcore, like laser focus, but that's a good thing. That's really yeah. good. Sometimes I'm like, okay, Lindsay, focus, like stop thinking about 17 different stories. You can't work on all of them at once for the love of God, just write this one. <laughs> yeah. Well, so I think that was it. like part of what drove me towards writing this one. Cause I was going to write the next right. Atlantis legacy book. And I, I couldn't stop thinking about this one. I was like, okay, well, if I don't write this right now, then the whole time that I'm writing, yeah. you know, I'll be thinking about this. So it would have happened if I had done it the other way around. So just yeah. kind of get it out of my system. <laughs> Um, yeah. Um, but what am I reading? Um, I am in the middle of, uh, a strange hymn. I think it's a strange hymn. Um, the second book in the bargainer series mm -hmm. by Laura Thalassa, um, uh, which is Rhapsodic is the first book in the bargainer series. I don't think I said that. Um, so I'm listening to that. Um, I definitely have slowed down a lot. So it's, I'm not even, I don't think I'm even listening every day. And I think a big part of that, I'll save until the, um, <laughs> till we get to our extra spoilery okay. part of the show, but try to remind me okay, uh, why I've slowed down. Okay. Um, yeah. And then I don't think I'm reading anything else. I just, um, I think it's the whole, like, I'm so focused on this story. I just can't. I don't have any room right now for yeah. other stuff, except, ooh, um, Epic Fantasy People, uh, the Wheel of Time series on Amazon started, and <laughs> we watched the, we don't have a ton of time, we have like one to two hours at night to watch TV after the kids go to sleep, um, but we watched it in two nights, the first three episodes that are out. Um, and I loved it, of course. I love that series, the book series by Robert Jordan. Um, and I think they've, they're doing a really good job. I like, I really liked um, a lot of the changes. They went a lot more towards diversity, which I thought was great. I watched the uh, behind the scenes thing about that. They did that on purpose. Yeah. 
I really, I really like the way that they've done that. Um, and, uh, it's just funny because my husband doesn't read. I mean, like he can read, but he doesn't read right <laughs> by choice. Um, so obviously he hasn't read these books. Um, so his experience while watching this show is so different from my experience while watching the show. And it really is, while I wouldn't say that these, this, I wouldn't say the show is anything like Game of Thrones other than the fact that it's like an epic fantasy show. There's a lot more magic and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not so just like darkly twisted and there's not any incest. Um, it's, um, it is similar in the way that it is totally different for people who have read the books than people who haven't read the books. Not to say that it's not a good experience for both groups of people. It's just a totally different experience because right. when you read the books, you know who these, like there was a character who they introduced in the third episode, um, Tom Marilyn. And I knew exactly who it was as soon as like, he's, he's a bard. When he's introduced, he's a bard. And I knew it's like his foot starts tapping. Like you don't even see him and they do like the so slow. Scroll. Have you seen it? Have you seen the show? No, it's on my list though. Okay. I'm going to watch it probably this weekend. Yeah. So there's like a slow pan up his body and I was like, oh my God, I know who this is. I know. So this is like, just ridiculous. So ridiculous. <laughs> That's so funny. Cause I haven't read the book, so I will probably be in Adam's shoes, but is he, is he enjoying it at least or? Yeah. Yeah. He was like, he told me he, um, he was like, if I was just watching it by myself, I probably would have stopped after the first episode because I don't know what's going on. He's like, <laughs> but I'm enjoying it. <laughs> yeah. Like, okay, cool. Yeah. It's really great. Um, my favorite character in the books is Lan Mandragoran. Um, and uh, I love, I love, um, I think his name is Daniel Henny, but he's, I feel like he's a perfect casting for Lan. Cool. Um, yeah, I, I really am so excited. I, it's fun to be excited about a series or a show that like is going to be released like once a week, you know, they did the first three episodes and then they're doing once a week. I was going to ask because so I'm like, they only have three. Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking, it's fun to have a show to look forward to because we never do that. We always wait until there's a bunch out and then we just binge it. So yeah, That's yeah. Fun. not a book, too. but <laughs> based on a book. Yeah. Oh, that's exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I guess we should dive into the book. Let's do it. We need okay. to refresh my memory. This is all almost a week ago now. I need to, I know to get it's the same. I need to get the juices flowing again. Yeah. I definitely feel like, um, book two, I'm like, I hope I don't confuse stuff that's happening <laughs> between the two books. Anyway, um, I will read the description right now and, uh, listeners, uh, this yep. would be the time that you might want to step off if you're <laughs> step off <laughs> if, if you're um, wanting to avoid spoilers. So, uh, yeah. So here's the de the description for Rhapsodic by Laura Thalassa, and it's kind of a long description. So I'll just try to try to go quickly. Um, Calypso Lilis is a siren with a very big problem, one that stretches up her arm and far into her past. For the last seven years, she's been collecting a bracelet of black beads up her wrist, magical IOUs for favors she has received. Only death or repayment will fulfill the obligations. Only then will the beads disappear. Everyone knows that if you need a favor, you go to the bargainer to make it happen. He's a man who can get you anything you want, at a price. And everyone knows that sooner or later he always collects. But for one of his clients, he's never asked for repayment. Not until now. When Callie finds the Fey King of the Night in her room, a grin on his lips and a twinkle in his eye, she knows things are about to change. At first, it's just a chaste kiss, a single bead's worth, and a promise for more. For the bargainer, it's more than just a matter of rekindling an old romance. Something is happening in the other world. Fey warriors are going missing one by one. Only the women are returned, each in a glass casket, a child clutched to her breast. And then there are the whispers among the slaves, whispers of an evil that's been awakened. If the bargainer has any hope to save his people, he'll need the help of the siren he spurned long ago. Only, only 
His foe has a taste for exotic creatures, and Callie just happens to be one. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, so I'm going to start with this. <laughs> the whole time I was reading, I first of all, I did. I enjoyed this book. Mm-hmm. I did. Um, and I, you mentioned that you're already on book two. I, yeah. am, I am going to buy the actual paperback that has all the books in it. Um, oh, there's my, like a omnibus. Yeah, I'm going to get that because I really like the cover. It's pretty. <laughs> um, but anyway, so I really enjoyed it. And I've talked before that I read her um, the first book in her Four Horsemen series. And I really like that too. That's post-apocalyptic mm-hmm. fantasy, I guess, romance. Um, I really enjoyed that one. So I was really excited to dive into this. And I definitely enjoyed it. I even liked her heroine a lot more in this book, um, The mm. Siren. She was really cool. But it was weird. I feel like this was a good book. Again, I really enjoyed it. But I feel like it was almost two books in one because it was almost like two different storylines. You had the bargainer and his role on Earth and then that entire storyline. And then Mm -hmm. you have him as the king, the night king and all the other titles he has. And then everything that's going on in that world. And that was really interesting to me. And I don't think it was bad, but I also am kind of like, I don't know. Like, I feel like, I don't know. It's just an interesting choice. I think. Yeah. Um, I, I, um, I didn't, I didn't write that. I don't think I wrote that down in the questions. I can't remember what I wrote down in the questions, but I definitely wanted to talk about the two. Yeah. Kind of storylines that are happening. Yeah. It's just really interesting. And, um, you, they go, goes back and forth between the two, which I like mm-hmm. because you're learning, you're seeing what's happening in the present, but you're learning about the past Mm -hmm. kind of intertwined, which I really think that's clever and smart and everything. Mm -hmm. But again, he feels like two completely different characters to me, which is, I think for me, that's hard for me to wrap my my mind around a little bit. Yeah. Um, Because I really like the bargainer more than I like the Night King, if that's a weird thing to say, because it's the same guy, but I just feel like they're very different. Like one is very menacing and protective and scary and then the other one is just kind of more in the background because she's kind of the lead character in yeah. that storyline so I don't know I don't know it's just yeah. very interesting yeah Choice. and I yeah so like there's the present day storyline when she's older and then there's the past storyline when she's a teenager yeah and I think my the thing that I wouldn't say like threw me off but the teenager storyline made it feel more YA and I think it's categorized as YA um I don't know but I definitely wouldn't call it YA Mm -mm. but it made I don't know it kind of like I guess threw me a little bit in terms of like I kept thinking of older Callie as younger Callie like it was hard for me to to age her up and yeah, because I mean, through half of the book, she's 16, 15, yeah. and 16, and through the other half of the book, she's 21, right? So yeah, I yeah. can see that. Yeah. yeah. So that was my my main thing um, with the two different storylines that just... Yeah. 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 I don't know. It was really cool, though. I like... But I have questions, too. So um, there's a lot that they don't explain. Like mm-hmm. I don't, under, and I'm assuming they'll do it in other books. If not, then that really sh- it sucks because I'm confused how he's the bargainer and he's the night king. I don't understand how he's both. Things. Yeah. That's confusing. Well, to me. so in the second book, and this isn't like a big spoiler. It's just, I feel like this clarifies that a little bit. Um, there's like one little throwaway line that mentions that he was the, he's always been the bargainer. Okay. So, and he became the, he became the Night King, like he earned that position, Mm -hmm. but the bargainer he's always been is what it sounded like. So the other question that I have too is, so he obviously lives in two worlds. He lives in the other world, but then he also lives on earth and where she lives, but she's paranormal. She's a siren. Mm -hmm. And so she's a magical creature. There's werewolves, there's witches, there's a, but there's other things. But like, they're not, there are humans too. So how, yeah. what makes you, I don't, she, yeah, I, yeah, I totally, I want to know more about the human magical world as yeah. well. Cause in the second book, we're entirely in so far, we're entirely in the other world. I'm about halfway through, I think. And I definitely am curious because 
in the second book, again, this isn't like, this is more of a world build, world building thing and not a story spoiler, but they talk about how all humans or all people from the human world are referred to as slaves by the right. fae. In even all the magical people, everyone. Mm-hmm. So they don't they're view like them, disgusting and dirty and yeah. Yeah, they don't view them as like different species. Kind of like how I feel like you in a lot of urban fantasy or paranormal books, like the magical people are a different species. Yeah. Well, that's like when you know. in even in the first book, when she was kidnapped, everyone was like, Ew, gross. Why is there a human? Even yeah. if she's a siren, she's still dirty human. So she's yeah. a slave. They still called her a slave. Yeah. Even though to us human are us mortal humans she would yes. just be she is literally a siren who can like make, make people you do yeah whatever. she can like <laughs> compel people to do whatever she wants and yeah has a melodic voice and you know yeah. like that's not like normal humans yeah <laughs> so that's I very that's, interesting to us <laughs> you know it's funny like I miss that part like when she's in the the other world it's almost like she's been defanged I miss her having her siren power because it doesn't work on the fae yeah and so i hope that later in the series they go back to the human world or she evolve it'd be really cool yeah. if she could evolve somehow uh or her powers could grow to work on the fae and then it would be like a big f you to the fae who like well, looked down their noses at her that doesn't seem like a stretch because spoiler alert uh by the end of this book she's like part fae right i mean yeah. she has wings and scales and claws yeah i mean she's yeah. like she's part she's she like you know, is the she looks like a siren now yeah so it's like I mean, I don't think that's a big stretch for her to be able to ha- use her abilities on them because mm-hmm. now she's, unless she doesn't have them anymore at all, I guess I don't know that answer based on but She where still does left. where I am, so. Oh, yeah, so. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, as far as world building, there's definitely a lot of questions that I think that were kind of like left. Yeah, it's open-ended. very intriguing. Yeah. Um, I think she built, she has built a really cool world. I mean, I don't, I, I know like fey stuff is really, there's t- like a gazillion fey books right now i i think the last few fantasy books i read have all been kind of like fey based i think all of sarah j mass's stuff yeah. is fey based um which is not really my thing and um, not me either usually so, but it just yeah. is everywhere right now so it's hard to mm-hmm. not trip over a fey book <laughs> when you just like go walk <laughs> um so yeah but i do think it i it's interesting like all of the Fae books that I've read, um, it's been cool to see like the different unique twists that people can put on it. But it's also as I don't, I'm not like, I wouldn't call myself a like Fae. I don't know a lot about like Fae. You're not a Fae whisperer? I'm not a Fae whisperer. No. Concert. I'm not like yes. a Fae lore mm-hmm. person. Like it's not something I've studied or read up on at all. And I know there is like specific lore. Have you read Laura's bio? No. I'm going to pull it up really quick so we can read it so I can read it to you just because it's so funny that you're saying that um oh my god uh well before you read it let me just say before I lose my train of thought yeah um, no no continue it's been fun because I did have did just read um a court of thorns and roses Mm -hmm. and the second and part of the third book in that series um and there's also Faye in the Fever series, which I recently read. Um, but it, it's fun to see like the names that are the same and to like be able to pick out the pieces. Oh, yeah. Like the mythology of it yeah, all. Yeah, the pieces that come from the actual mythology that exists. Yeah, so no, I, cool. I enjoy that part. Like the the scholar in me enjoys that part. Uh, different book, but we were just, we were talking about um, Court of whatever. Thorns Thorn and Roses. Roses. Yeah. Um, so I never read on, I know that you did, um, but did you ever finish book three? I know you said you got stuck. No, I got stuck. And I think part of the problem was also, um, that I started, I was writing a uh, song mm-hmm. of scarabs and fallen stars. So it's yeah. the same thing that's going on with me with the middle of this book is I just, uh, I can't like commit completely right. And if there's anything that pulls me out of the story, I and just done. like, yeah, I'm done. Yeah. So yeah. In the book three of the Court of Thorns and Roses series, 
there's a character that I really don't like who's becoming more and more central to the story. And I'm just like, well, I don't want to like deal with her right now. (laughs) I will eventually. I'll probably do the audiobooks because I really like the narrator. Yeah. No, I, it's just like, Laura, I think she's, I mean, I've only read a couple of her books, but I really like her. Uh, she writes pretty, like, she doesn't skimp, you know, her stories are long and mm-hmm. they're good. Like they're, she's definitely giving you your money's worth and, mm-hmm. you, you know, like putting her heart and soul into these, which yeah. is really cool. Um, so I really, I definitely think, you know, again, this isn't really my genre, but I, I would definitely keep reading her books and exploring, you know, the different yeah. stuff that she writes. Yeah. For sure. I also like um, that she doesn't shut the door. Yeah. <laughs> Well, let me, before we get into that, um, I also agree, me as a romance <laughs> reader, um, but let me just read you really quick what her bio says. Found in the forest when she was young, Laura was raised by fairies, kidnapped by werewolves, and given over to vampires, <laughs> as, given over to vampires as repayment for a hundred year debt. She's been brought back to life twice, and with a single kiss, she woke her true love from eternal sleep. She now lives happily ever after under her undead. Oh, with her undead prince in a castle in the woods or something like that anyway. Is that- uh, that's awesome. Yeah. So it makes total, like she clearly is into this whole. Yeah. Fairy I think that's stuff. great. Yeah. I thought so too. That's anyway. See, we're already ready for her to come on the show. I already told you I reached I out know. to her. I have to reach out to her again, but she hasn't gotten back to me. I'm, we're too small. We're small. We're, we're small fries for her. Yeah. No, I don't our know. podcast I don't. isn't big enough. Yeah, <laughs> Laura, we'd love to have you on. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I just told her, I was like, I am a post-apoc author and I am so in, like you, because this is after the, I read the pestilence one. I was like, oh my gosh, I wish I would have written that. That would have been so freaking cool. Like what a great idea. I have total good idea and be right now. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, good job. Keep it up, girl. Yeah. Right. And I was like, oh, and if you want to ever call me podcast. <laughs> but anyway, um, but yeah, so back to the no closed door thing. Oh, yes. I, oh, oh, I did put that on here. Yeah, you did. Um, Favorite things about the book. Um, Yeah, I really appreciate, I get so, okay. So there have been series in the past where I have gone, like, on those, like, long romance arc series where there's, like, no sex in, like, the first book or even, like, the first few books. And then by the time you get to, like, the sex, it's, like, and fade to black. black. And you're, like, come on, man. Like, what did I just invest a, a, like, month of my life for? (laughs) me to like make it oh, up in I my understand. head yeah. yeah um so I definitely am one of those people who really appreciates the open door um which is funny because like I know there's definitely way more open door in the echo world of my like on my writing um in echo world there's the door is open in Atlantis it like it's like open, it's like cracked open and you're like kind of peeking through. <laughs> um, but it's, it's funny, like that series, I feel like would frustrate me as the reader. I would want more, but it's a lot more sci-fi and it's not sci-fi romance. So it just, I don't yeah, know, it's complicated. <laughs> no, I get it. I have to constantly, I have extra bonus scenes that I offer up because I'm like, <laughs> fuck, this is too steamy. I have to take it out. It's oh, hard, that's man. awesome. Yeah. So if you're a member of my newsletter, you get it in the vault. So because I'm just like steamy. I, yeah. I'm just like, oh, here's then the like curtained off part of the vault in the yeah, back. I'm like, oh, here's the three paragraphs I had to take out because it just didn't feel right for my audience for this book or for any of my books. I think that's again, that's all part of me really missing writing romance too. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll see where I go with it. Yeah. But anyway, but yeah. Um, so that was for one of your favorite things about the book. Yes. I think is what you I thought. really, I really appreciated that. It's, um, I, I really like that. I feel like I'm going to, I keep comparing her to Sarah J. Mass, but I really like that about her books too. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. What was my favorite thing about the book? I really liked her friend Temper. I liked the different characters. I think I liked, um, Luke, even though, you know, he's just some shifter werewolf guy who's like a big <laughs> brood or whatever, but even he ended up being good. Okay. In the end, he was fine. Um, yeah. I don't know. I guess there's not really a lot of different characters. Um, I, I really, she did a really good job of, and I think it was in part going back and forth between the timelines. She did, she made it 
she didn't need a lot of extra characters and she still made mm -hmm. it really interesting because it was so much relationship building and so much mm -hmm. character development between them. I think that she did a really good job. Well, um, and Callie is, I don't know if it's because she's a siren or what, but she doesn't have like a lot of relationships or friends. Yeah. Yeah, she doesn't. Well, she comes from a really crappy background. Her mom's yeah. dead. She, she killed her stepdad, who was absolutely horrible to her. Mm -hmm. um, hence where the bargaining began. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean, she only really had the bargainer, which is this really sad, but almost, rom it's also like a romantic yeah. thing too, you know? It's like, mm. yeah. And I am really excited to see where um, their initial connection goes because um there's some stuff that you learn in the second book that makes it feel like it's like a very, like a faded mates kind of thing. Yeah. So it's, I was thinking one of the things I really did like about, oh my God, Lindsay, I just lost it. Oh no. Um, <laughs> for the love of God. Anyway, I don't know. We'll figure it out later. I can't even blame it on drinking because I'm like, have a watered down freaking drink, but I think it's just my brain. Um, but anyway, yeah, I don't know. We'll come back to it. Um, okay. <laughs> it's annoying as fuck. <laughs> um, so like related to my favorite things about the book, um, it like falls into the next category also of my favorite, one of my favorite scenes. I really loved the reveal that like connected everything kind of. Oh, her wish. Yes, her, that's what her, I was her just going to say. Wish. Yes, I was for like, the love of God, thank you. That was what I was oh, going to bring I up. Love, yeah. I love, like the whole time you're like, how could they possibly, as they're going through the past storyline, I'm sitting here thinking like, they're getting closer and closer together. Like what is going to happen that's going to like drive them apart and make him abandon her because for clearly that's years or whatever, in her, years or whatever. yeah, in her mind, that's what happens and why she's so mad at him when he just shows up randomly. So just to make sure I understood it correctly. So she asked, she had such a big wish that it took seven years or whatever it was to repay that debt, right? That's essentially what it was. Like, oh. because his magic has a cost. Yeah. And so for him to use that magic is essentially was by time. That's kind of what I got from it. Because she so. didn't say I... anything about timing in her wish. She just said, I want us to ever be forever be bonded or whatever the heck it was. But yeah, I think it was some, for some reason that wish couldn't be fulfilled with her being the age that she was she had to like go through stuff and like grow up and and stuff mm. like that so I think that for that wish to be fulfilled he had to go away and I, I could totally be getting this wrong because it's been like a couple weeks since I read it but yeah. um he had to go away and let her become the person that then they could be like be each other's persons so the way I remember it um and again I could be wrong is that because she, he was saying like everything has a price so if you just want somebody to be killed or if you want you know some you know some something to be cleaned up so that you don't get in trouble that's like a small use of his magic and it comes at a cost but it's like whatever like it's just a snap of his fingers and it's already done and paid or whatever and then you just pay him back but her wish was so it was so costly and it was like so long term because it was for eternity Mm -hmm. like it had a higher price and so that was what I got out of it was that he his magic doesn't just like it he doesn't have control of it and it doesn't just come without a cost like it has to be the energy the magic has to come from somewhere and so it took that much time for his magic I don't know I don't know anyway again another one of those things where I don't think yeah. it's super clear but it yeah definitely she so essentially it's all her fault <laughs> Yeah. Oh no, that was, I think that was the thing that I really liked about <coughs> yeah. that big reveal, that twist was that like, she was so mad at him for abandoning her. And then it's revealed that it's yeah. her fault. Like he didn't have a choice. He tried every day to get back to her and he couldn't until one day he could. And that's when he showed up in her room. Yeah. And she's just like, mind blown. I thought that was great. I thought yeah. that was done really well. And everything led up to it from the past. And then the two like time periods kind of converged there. Did you listen to the audiobook? Yes. Okay. I, did, I read it. Um, and then also as far as favorite scenes, so clearly that kind of is one of them too, right? Because that's like this big, like jaw dropping. Oh shit. Yeah. That sucks. 
Um, there's a couple other scenes, um, but one of them that I really liked too, and it's very small, but it's also was like kind of this like made my heart double thump, you know, was when he come when um is his name Luke? That's the werewolf, right? That's his name Luke. And it was the the ex boyfriend, the werewolf guy. He comes yeah. to he comes to the bargainer's house, Des's house, mm-hmm. and um, he's coming to get her to save her, whatever. And Des walk uh, there. She's, re- oh, she's telling yes. him that she's this fine. I'm fine. Like, here's my debt. You don't understand. She explains the whole story to him. And he goes, well, why didn't you tell me? And then they're hugging and they're making up because they've been fighting this whole book. And then the bargainer comes out or the night king or whatever um, comes out and his wings are completely out mm-hmm. and she's clueless. And she doesn't understand why the werewolf just backs up. And he goes, I didn't know. I didn't know. And then he just yeah. like, leaves. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, what does like, it mean? What? I was like on pins and needles. Yeah. So that was a really cool scene. I yeah. thought too. It was. I liked that. And then she's all trying to get like, like sneaky. And she's like texting her friend and the witch. She's trying to figure out like, well, what does it mean? And they're like trying to piece it together and what they've heard in the lore over there. And he goes, you know, obviously yeah. he sets them straight later, but yeah, I love it. Yeah, it was good. I thought that was really good too. And then another scene that I really, really loved, um, just like visually, because I love these scenes that are just like huge, like magic bombs Mm -hmm. and I thought it was done especially when there's darkness involved um was the at the end end ish um so she's held captive and transformed by the mad king and (laughs) Des just like storms in he doesn't even storm he like stalks in with like oozing darkness yeah and it like fills up the whole throne room and it, it so his like darkness just like tears Explodes, the mad yeah. king apart <laughs> yeah and it was so epic yeah that was really cool and it was like zero at oh like the he like the um the mad king like slashes him with a sword and he just doesn't stop he's like so terminator yeah. he doesn't stop walking yeah i did catch it i kept thinking wait did he not do, get him do, or does he do, not do, care do, do, yeah do. Yeah, he doesn't care. It just like closed up and it's like whatever. Oh, Darkness yeah, yeah. He did kill. Close, close yeah. It was great. It was really yeah, he visual. like levels the whole room and yeah. she, she's like, it's in it's in like rubble. Yeah. Yeah. And then obviously the scene after that where we figure out that she what she looks like and that she's changed forever. And I kept thinking, oh, are they gonna Zina use magic power somehow and turn her back? And I really like the way they the direction they went with that and how he thinks she's even more beautiful now, even though she's all changed and um and her like really looking in the mirror and seeing like it is just me i just look a little different and mm-hmm. but know. also i really liked the focus on the discomfort like how uncomfortable it would be and like yes. trying to get used to having these massive wings on your back like black how would wings you sleep? yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah and even like she did a really good author did a really good job of writing the pain of what it would feel like like i felt like i could totally feel her skin ripping, her bones moving, mm. her things growing out of her skin. Like, I feel like she did a really good job with that. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. she's a good writer for sure. Yeah. She's fun. Yeah. So yeah, I'm definitely excited to keep reading the series. Like I said, I want to get the, I already have it in my cart. I just, I feel like every time I get something in my cart on Amazon, I'm just like, I sh- could have, should have waited one day. There were five more things could have gone in there. So I'm trying to be patient <laughs> and fill it before I just start ordering everything. But yeah, mm-hmm. I, I want to keep reading for sure. I enjoyed it. Well, I um, remember I said earlier that there was something I wanted to yeah. talk about, which was um, related to my own books, not directly just, oh, okay. So it's the lo- the long romance thing. So in this one, they do hook up mm-hmm. in the first book. Um, and I definitely feel like as soon as that happens, I just like, my interest wanes a little bit. Mm -hmm. And so like going into the second book, there's still like sexy scenes and stuff, but it's not that like waiting for it to happen. Yes. And I I think I like need that. (laughs) Well, so it, it, um, I need to know, I mean, you need to know those things, right? Like, yeah, I don't know. I, um, I was definitely, I, there was, I was like wishy-washy in the book that I'm writing right now. Um, mostly, washy I guess leaning away from having (laughs) than wishy um (laughs) from having them uh like 
actually have sex in the first book and it doesn't make sense to have them do it. It just doesn't fit with the whole storyline, but I feel like relieved having like taken that or made that decision, um, especially with how my own interest has been in the second book, which I'm really enjoying. It's just not like, you're not the, as addicted. Yeah. It's, it's like the waiting, the anticipation is the thing that, that yeah, I get it can like really keep me like, I need to like keep listening. Cause I need to like, know what's going to, I don't know what that says about me, but, <laughs> um, yeah. So there's that. Yeah, no, that's a good point. I feel like I can get that way too. Maybe that's why I like romances because in general, romances are like one and done, you know, like, yeah. I mean, I guess if you think about like the big long, like you think about like 50 shades of gray, I didn't ever read that, but I feel like I, I didn't either. I feel like I'm a bad romance reader for saying that, but um, <laughs> I didn't read it. But again, it's like, I know that, um, like, obviously that whole thing has sex in it. And then there's two more books after that. So I guess that's a little different as far as um, series and, um, but most romances are kind of like one and done. There's might be a series, but usually it's always a different, you know, mm -hmm. um, couple. And but so in paranormal romance, a lot, mm -hmm. maybe like half, I would say, is like the cup, couple per book, different couple per book. And the, the other half is the long romance. Oh, yeah. You know, what book, what series I should, we should, or I'm kind of interested to get back into is, because we had her on when she had book one, was Laurel Knight. Remember she came on and she had that reverse harem, but it was super oh, slow Oh, yeah, burn. the werewolf one. Yeah, but it was super slow burn, and yeah. she, it was the female character, yeah. and then all the guys who were fighting to be with her or whatever. Yeah. But, like, was it was called? super Alpha slow burn. something? Yeah, I don't know. I have to go back, but I would, that would be one that I would be, like, that's a good example of the slow burn because, but they still, mm -hmm. they keep it interesting because there's so many different characters. Maybe that's why people like to really read those, like those reverse harem or harem because, or there's, still because there's still sexual tension. There's, there's still build yeah, up. There's always, there's always going to be sexual tension because you have all those different personalities mm -hmm. and all those different characters all yeah. contending or whatever. Right. So I guess maybe that makes sense. Well, I think that's what I like a lot about a, a lot of the, so like urban fantasy is definitely my like favorite genre to read um and I think one of the thing that things that I like a, so much about a lot of the urban fantasy books is that because they are not a lot the ones that I like do have romance lines but it's not a story about one one couple specifically you know so there's other romance threads woven throughout as these people like find their way to each other kind of mm -hmm. if that makes sense um and so I think that keeps it really interesting for me in the urban fantasy like the, it, that avoids the whole like main couple hookup kind of issue yeah. so I guess what you had mentioned that your reader group was reading this what did they think about the book oh they love it Who's like, how do you decide? Did somebody say, oh, we should read this or did you find we it? We do a like, poll. Oh. So we have, so those, there's a post in my group, um, that people can add suggestions to. And then each month we pull the suggestions that we haven't already read. And then we do a poll and everybody votes or whoever wants to vote votes. Um, and then we read whichever one gets the most votes. Nice. Yeah. And they loved it. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, they yeah, she's it. definitely on my list of fun authors. Definitely. Yeah, I still I want to finish. I want to read the next book in the um, Four Horsemen too. Like I said, I really enjoyed that, and I'm really looking forward to seeing how she carries on now that I've read the first book. And anyway. and that one's different than this the style because it is a different couple through. For yeah, each book. yeah, it is a different couple through each book because each one is a different horseman and his mm -hmm. love interest and. Each horseman obviously has a different task. So the survival aspects and the situations, it's going to be interesting to see how she changes those, how those change per book and um, how these, how she can, she did a really good job. I mean, I, I didn't love the main character for the, um, for the main female character. Like I really enjoyed um, Callie's character, mm -hmm. but um, 
I mean, she's not bad or anything, but I didn't like, I didn't, you know, think she was amazing or anything, but she, um, it, she did a really good job as an author. She had a really good job making her go through the process of trying to figure out like, how is it that I'm falling for this person who is literally responsible for killing the world, you know? <laughs> so like she did a really good job of like having her have all of these issues and bringing them together and these little, like all that sexual tension and all those little things that they do, like hating each other. I mean, he tortures the shit out of her. And yet somehow, like by the end, you know, it's like, they're both sorry, whatever. Right. So, um, but it's going to be interesting to see how she writes other female characters who essentially have to go through the same process. Like how different mm -hmm. can she make it? You know what I mean? So yeah. I'm really interested to see how the next book is going to be different from well, this. Well, gosh, one. I feel like I'm going to need to read this series because I am, you know, I'm so into these like dark villainous. Oh yeah. Romances right now. So yeah. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, I think that I, I didn't, I mean, so my, my one thing with this book that I felt like I wish there was more, I wish there was more, um, I wish we got to see more on page of Des being like that bad guy that yeah. he's, he is supposed to be that we hear that he is, yeah. but he only seemed like a nice guy. Like that's true. Around he's around her and he was yeah. protective and everything. Yeah. I want to see more of him like doing really bad things because then I feel like those sweet moments with her will be even sweeter. Yeah. Yeah. It was a fun book though. I'm excited. Mm -hmm. I'm excited to read the next one. Yeah. Which is funny because again, this isn't really my genre, but yeah, I like it. I'm excited to, um, like finish my book <laughs> so I can enjoy reading again. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay. So, uh, we do have a couple more, uh, thing, things we wanted to, or just, I guess one, just one more thing, um, to talk about with this book, which is oh. who would you cast as the two main characters? So Desmond Flynn and Callisto Lillis. <laughs> I have a question about her because it re repeatedly like, probably way more than was necessary describes him. I thought I was talking about how distracting it was that they kept talking about how silvery he was. I know he does have like silver blonde, hair, silver right? hair. Yeah. Silver blonde, silver blonde, silver blonde. Um, yeah. but the whole time I kept thinking, I can't even picture her. Cause I don't even remember what she looks like. Like I don't ever, mm -hmm. I don't even remember what color hair she has. I thought it was dark. Maybe probably, you're probably right. But and I, she's a I, siren. So she's, I think she is mentioned that um and near the beginning that like it's it's part of the reason why her stepfather was like well he's a terrible person obviously right is but because she's but also like, why yeah. he was like she's raping super, her yeah is because she's like so beautiful she's a siren she's like everything you would want her to be so maybe right. that's part of her magic is like she her beauty like is in the eye of the beholder i don't know yeah so anyways i don't even know really what she looks like but um so you said des so or you said charlie Charlie Hunnam or however yeah. you say his name. Kind of, yeah. Um, but like not just because I feel like Charlie can play a lot of different types of characters. Um, but definitely like Jax from Sons of Anarchy like style. Gritty and dirty looking. Yeah, with like the longer before you cut his hair. Yeah. But like, yeah, like angry, vengeful Charlie. Yeah. That's yeah, I know. I was saying that I was having a hard time trying to figure out I think for her which that's another reason why like I was bringing up I don't really know what she looks like but um the the personality to me um it, she kind of reminds me of um Teresa Palmer who plays I, I I'm imagining her oh from other, discovery of witches yeah I, I I'm thinking of her from different movies because she's one of, she's one of my favorite actresses um from different movies but like, um, yeah, but her, I, I can see her being like, I've seen, she's in some horror movies and she does an amazing job. She's in- Isn't she um, in Warm Bodies? Oh yeah, she's in Warm Bodies. I barely remember that one, but she's also in I Am Number Four and she's a, or four or whatever. Yeah, I Am Number, what, anyway, she's in that. She's like a total badass. So I, I feel like there's a couple different characters that, that she plays and she's really good at being like- kind of like sassy and I think that mm. was I think for me that's kind of where I don't know though she has I guess we have to throw some 
dark hair color on her though. <laughs> yeah, she's a, definitely always blonde. I feel yeah, like she is. Um, um, my choice for Callie was Jenna Dewan. Um, I don't know if you ever saw, um, I know who she is married to Channing Tatum X. Not anymore. No X. Yeah. Um, but no, I don't know if you ever saw, um, was it like the witches, witches of, of East, East end, end yeah. or whatever it was? Yeah. Um, she was very like vixen-y in that. Yeah. And she, she like, I feel like her care or the way that she appeared or the way that they like yeah, d- made her character look in that was uh, to me very, very well fit. Like how Callie would look. Yeah. Yeah. She's always has like really like p- perfect red lips and yeah. Which is very like curvy. Yeah. You know, like vixen fun. fun, fun. Yeah. I don't know who I would pick for him. Like I said, all you see is silver now. And I'm just like, I'm trying to think of someone who's like fairy. I know. I'm having a really I actually, time. So I, I was Googling, I was like, blonde actors. And it was like, I don't like any of these options. <laughs> None of these are right. Yeah. So I don't know. Because then he would need to have, I feel like he needs to have like, the more like angular features, like a fey looking kind of, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. Um, always fun to think about. Yeah. No, that was a good. That was a fun read. I'm glad we did that one. And it's yeah. funny that you that you you guys were reading it for your I know uh, group or whatever because I had just I got it on Amazon Prime and so I was like, oh yeah, I'll read this. And I was actually one chapter in when you said that, and I was like, oh, perfect. oh, funny. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's great. So, um, anyway, <laughs> anything else? Are we good? I think we're good. Overall, we recommend it. Two thumbs up. Yes. Yes. And obviously I am continuing with the series and you are planning on continuing yeah, with the series. Yeah, for sure. Oh, super fun. Um, we'll have to do these little chats more often. Um, yeah. It's fun to talk about them. Yeah. Um, okay. So dun, 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 dun. what are we doing next time? Um, I nobody don't knows. know. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Um, that does wrap up this episode though. Um, and we want to thank you for listening to our rambling because again, I mean, we always ramble, we always go on tangents, but we didn't have any guests to, um, keep us rain us in. Yeah. To help us stay on track and stay focused. So anyways, thanks for listening to all of our jibber jabber. Um, and we, like I said, we definitely recommend this. If you guys are interested, rhapsodic, perhaps I'm saying that right. Rhapsodic. I think so. I don't know. Anyway. Um, anyway, totally loved it. We're going to continue on. Um, and yeah, I guess next time it's going to be a surprise what we're doing. So just make sure you stay tuned, keep your eyes and ears open, um, for any announcements that might be coming your way. And in the meantime, if you enjoyed this episode, please leave us a review wherever you listen and don't forget to join the no shelf control Facebook group. Um, I haven't been posting too much in there lately because, well, we're kind of all over the place with what we've been programming, but I will try and keep up on that for sure. Uh, but anyway, check the show notes. Uh, we're going to put some links in there for this book, for some fun YouTube videos that you guys got to check out. And um, yeah, until next time, be well, stay safe, and happy reading adventures, everybody. Happy reading, spirit fingers. <laughs> Ah. Uh.